Welcome back to the Horizon TV where we hold the best of conversations and analysis. I'm Somna Sambo. Now to the issue of deepening insecurity and violence in Nigeria. Last week, the government officially labeled bandits as terrorists seeking to bring tougher sanctions against convicted gunmen, their informants and supporters. Officials, including Nigeria's chief of defense staff, said this declaration will enable the armed forces to take necessary action against them and finally stamp out banditry in the volatile northwest. Over the weekend, at least 200 people are believed to have been killed in villages in the northwestern state of Zamfara in some of the deadliest attacks by armed bandits at large in the region. There are now questions about other so-called bandits operating outside the northwest and how uh, will the criminal justice system distinguish between banditry and terrorism? Well, I have on the line the independent defense and security consultant and counterterrorism expert David Otto. Thank you, David, for joining us. Um, yes, and, and I go straight to you on this issue of the prescription of uh, bandits and uh, in, in renaming them terrorists, that's what so many people are saying, that we've always known that the acts that they commit are acts of terrorism, but a lot of Nigerians don't understand what labeling them terrorists will mean. The chief of defense staff, in his explanation uh, uh, on Monday, said that this has not given them the opportunity to actually uh, put aside human rights issues and then go straight on to bomb these uh, 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 terrorists and ensure that there is a return you know, to peace in the Northwest. Just take us through what that actually means. Uh, I think, first of all, you know, from a legal perspective, uh, what that means uh, is that um, uh, Nigeria is applying the Terrorism uh, Prevention Act uh, 2013 amended. And in that act, um, it is clearly stated um, that anyone who uses or uses the threat of force, you know, um, you know to, uh, for an unlawful uh, violence, you know, um, perhaps for political ends, but also to influence government policy um, through intimidation or coercion, um, will be committing an act of terrorism. So um, from a legal point, um, I think, you know, there is a foothold uh, that the government has here to include uh, the bandits, you know, because of course we've seen the kind of atrocities, you know, that they have committed. And if you look again in that document of the uh, 2013 uh, Prevention Terrorism Act, it clearly states the various qualifications. And when I talk about qualifications, I'm talking about uh, what kind of acts, you know, will be considered as acts of terrorism. And there it is clearly stated kidnapping is one of them, um, you know, um, banditry or armed robbery, you know, so all those qualifications are things that, you know, one way or the other have been carried out by the so-called bandits operating in the northwest of Nigeria, especially in the states of Kaduna, Sokoto, Zamfara, Niger, um, Niger state as well, the Niger state, and also um, KB, um, KB state. So I think, again, that point, you know, should be made very clear from a legal perspective. Now, if you look at also the point of, you know, uh, you know, the, I mean, a lot of people have argued uh, correctly that how do you then distinguish between who a criminal is and who a terrorist is? And does that mean that every criminal in Nigeria or every bandit, you know, in Nigeria automatically becomes a terrorist? Now, again, it boils down to the legal argument because when laws are put in place or when, you know, um, regulations are put in place like the one which proscribes uh, bandits as terrorists, it is down to how the courts, you know, and the lawyers will interpret this when somebody is, you know, uh, or when a perpetrator is accused or taken in front of the justice, um, you know, uh, to, to um, you, know, you know, in accusation of carrying that act. So I think, you know, uh, from that perspective, you know, it is very clear that, you know, the kind of acts which these bandits have been carrying out you know, um, is one that spreads a lot of terror, you know, within the areas where they carry that, but also internationally, uh, outside uh, Nigeria. Uh, as, outside especially Nigeria. with the, especially with the killing of over 200 persons in Zamfara. I mean, that's an act of terrorism. 
uh, uh, people like the Northwestern Governor of uh, Kaduna State, um, Erufa, is um, uh, saying that with this gazette that outlaws uh, uh, these bandits and then the, you know describes them as terrorists, he would subscribe to the idea of carpet bombing them entirely in the forest and you know planting trees afresh. Do you think that is what the military will be doing now? I think one thing that gives the government an upper hand is the fact that when you then proscribe uh, criminals as terrorists, it gives you the opportunity to be able to use the kind of um, you know military force that has been deployed in the northeast against Boko Haram. So, for example, the Nigerian government has purchased uh, you know these uh, fighter jets, you know these uh, Tuscano um, you know fighter jets from the U.S. government, but you know those jets were specifically meant you know to be used against Boko Haram. But now that you know the bandits in the north. Um, West have been proscribed, you know, as terrorists, it gives the government the ability and the capability to deploy all maximum force. But, but also, I think the implication is that anyone who is affiliated, you know, aiding and abetting, anyone who supports these individuals, I mean, I understand the challenge here is being able to identify who these terrorists are. I mean, this is the first time that, you know, you would have terrorists without a name. In, in Nigeria, because of course you have Boko Haram um, in the northeast, you've got the Islamic or the so called Islamic State of West Africa province. But now, how do you name them? You know, this new set of um, terrorists that are appearing in the northeast. I mean, some of them, sorry, in the northwest, some of them are claiming, you know, affiliation with Boko Haram, but they are not Boko Haram. So th there's a challenge there, uh, you know, in terms of law enforcement. How will the military identify? Who is a terrorist? And uh, okay, a and this brings us to the question of the unsuccessful persecution of, uh, you know, terrorism acts in Nigeria. Why do you think that there's a lethargy or there's a difficulty in prosecuting those that have been arrested for terrorism uh, in Nigeria? We haven't seen so much. Yeah. Even those who are sponsoring the, financially this terrorism, we haven't seen them being brought to book. But you go to the UAE, you see Nigerians being brought to the book there. Why is it difficult for the Nigerian government? I think the difficulty is in terms of the way that the law has been, um, you know, uh, defined. So, for example, if you say that uh, somebody who commits an act of terrorism um, does so for political ends, um, so there is one thing which is the action or which is the act, you know, the act of violence, and there is there's the other thing which is the the goal in which you know. So, uh, you know, in in, in the legal, um, you know, um, sense they call it the um, the, the the act. And also the the reason, you know. So so what we see here is that the courts will actually find somebody having been found to have committed an act of terrorism, but the the motive, you know, has, is not linked to that act. So that's why it's important to understand the difference between the act itself and the motivation behind it. So if you look at, for example, the bandits, you know, they carry out this act purely for the motivation of you know perhaps crime and criminality, which is very different from you know. Boko Haram, you know, members who, even again, sometimes they will put up this defense of, you know, uh, of uh, coercion or haven't been kidnapped uh, by the, you know, the Boko Haram group and, you know, then being forced into becoming, um, you know, members themselves. So the challenge uh, for the legal profession is in proving that somebody actually willfully, you know, um, carried out an act of terrorism, you know, for a particular end. So where where you cannot prove that you know the end game of an individual was political then it becomes very difficult in law okay. you know to v find very quickly as we have less than 60 seconds um, to go how does this position nigeria as fighting terrorism especially within uh, uh, west africa do you think that other countries need to adopt this sort of measures or uh, other countries have better measures than we do as a country fighting uh, terrorism i think nigeria has got one of the you know, the most experienced in fighting terrorism, you know, uh, in, in the entire Africa, um, in terms of the kind of groups that they face, the dynamics of their operations, and in terms of the, the kind of progress and challenges that they've made, you know, for more than a decade, fighting Boko Haram and the Islamic State. So, um, you know, um, they just have to be able to look at different uh, non-kinetic approaches, but also to look at measures of winning the hearts and minds of the local population. In fact, I think, you know, what the Nigerian government has to do now is to be able to claim um, its own strategy. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, they, they have challenges, but, you know, come up with a strategy that other African countries, for example, Mozambique, you know, um, 
countries in the Sahel who can easily copy. But right. you know what? Um, they, they, this is for me the best way that you know uh, you know it could be seen. Okay, very interesting indeed. Uh, we must thank you so much, um, David Otto, a defense and security analyst who has just joined us. Uh, he's a global affairs analyst also. Well, um, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambo.